trust the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy is there is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Have 
make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit have mercy on us Lord for we A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So we have a story this morning of, we're told, Greeks who come to Philip and say, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip does what any follower of Jesus would do, I hope. He goes to somebody else. <laughs> no, I, I don't hope you do that. <laughs> but he goes to Andrew. And Andrew and Philip go to Jesus. Right? And they say, there are people who wish to see you. And then we get this complete disconnect. It's like there's a whole part of the story that got lost. Because Jesus doesn't say, well, bring them on up then. Right? We don't know why they want to see Jesus. We don't know if one of them is sick and they've heard about him healing. We don't know if they've heard about his teaching and they want to listen. We don't know if they're just curious about who this man is. We know they want to see him. And when told, someone wants to see you, Jesus goes into this apparent non sequitur where he talks about the hours come and a grain of wheat has to fall and die. And if you want to save your life, you've got to lose it. And it's just like, what's going on? It doesn't seem to connect. So we have to remember that John is a master storyteller. Now John doesn't tell the story of the gospel the same way Mark and Matthew and Luke do. But John is a master storyteller. He is very deliberate in how he tells a story. And he says right from the front that he tells a story for a reason, and that's so that you know who Jesus is. The incarnate word, the light that's come into the world, the divine son from before time. He wants you to know very clearly all of the story of Jesus is to show you who Jesus is. And so when we hear this story, people coming and saying, we want to see Jesus, and then Jesus going off into a, what appears to be a tangent, actually John is very deliberate. He is saying, through what Jesus says, you want to see me? You better know how to see me, and what it's going to look like when you see me. So let's remind ourselves as well, it's the fifth Sunday of Lent. Which means that next week is Palm Sunday. And this is the 12th chapter of John. Which means we're heading into Holy Week. So when Jesus talks about a grain of wheat must fall to the ground and die. We can hear this very clearly as Jesus talking about his upcoming crucifixion. Right? We're being invited to really reflect on where in the story this is. The time has passed for sitting around along the Lake of Galilee and shooting the breeze. You want to see Jesus? Pick up your cross. 
We're headed to Jerusalem. We're headed to Holy Week. We're headed to the crucifixion. Do you want to see Jesus? Come along. And we're in Lent, which is a time for us to really reflect on our own life and how do we see Jesus. We're in Lent when we're invited into prayer, fasting, self-denial, into repentance, returning to the Lord, not because we are miserable sinners, but because we're called to the life of Jesus. And we're kind of called to let go of anything that gets in the way. And so we hear Jesus today say, you want to save your life, you've got to lose it. You want to, if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. And for generations, people often hear this in this way. If I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I will go to heaven when I die. I will lose my life to save it. And I guess that's a fine way of interpreting what Jesus is talking about, but it's a partial way. It's, it's not a complete way. And it's a way that slowly dismisses, dismisses our life here on earth. And I don't hear Jesus ever dismissing our life here on earth. I hear Jesus talking about how we are to live. And when Jesus said about coming to have, that we might have life and have it abundantly, I don't think Jesus meant later in the future sometime. You'll have life abundantly after you're dead. I think he's talking about right here, now. How do we have abundant life now? What needs to die now? so that we might see Jesus and have abundant life now. What is that grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies to give new life? And, and we, we're lucky. Lent always happens in the spring because we're reminded, we look outside and we see the new life coming up after a period when it appeared things were dead. We know that that's what is necessary you bury the grain so that it dies as that single seed and grows into new abundant life. So how do we see Jesus? Well, we have to let things die. You want to see Jesus? Look to the cross. You want to see Jesus? Look to the one who healed. You want to see Jesus? Look to the one who broke barriers and crossed borders and did things that were considered outrageous in his time and place. You want to see Jesus? Look to the life of Jesus and what Jesus did and look for where that is happening and what needs to die in order for that to happen. And it might be too much to say, well, everything. Right, but if we look at what Jesus showed us has to die, what has to die is this idea that Jew and Greek are different, separate, never to be one. In today's day and age, we might say, there is no longer Republican Democrat, American Canadian, Mexican, whatever, American Russian. There's only one in Jesus Christ. What has to die? The idea that power can be used in violent ways for the good. The idea that money is a sign of privilege from God, and if you're poor or sick, that's punishment from God. What has to die? The idea that this church is mine and mine alone. And that we don't talk about faith out there, and that politics has no place in the church. So what has to die is the definition of politics as partisanship, as opposed to the understanding of how do we live together. What has to die is claiming things as owners when we're called to be stewards. Sir, I would see Jesus. What needs to die? That we can see Jesus. That we can see Jesus in the beauty of creation. That we can see Jesus in the voice of a baby. That we can see Jesus in the hand outstretched of a homeless person. That we can see Jesus in the grocery checker or the school teacher or the one who votes totally different than I do and has multiple signs to tell that to me. What needs to die so we can see Jesus? So today we are blessed to have a baptism and confirmation and reception and reaffirmation. And part of what happens when we do that is we renounce 
the forces of this world that keep us from seeing Jesus. We renounce the powers that say that hate is appropriate, that it's all right to say, to dismiss others, to ignore those who are different from us, that it's okay to say that our highest allegiance is not to God, but to a, a family or a country or an occupation or to a color. We renounce that and we turn to Jesus Christ who said all are one, all are beloved, all are loved, and we're invited to re- see Jesus. And then we say, well, what does that mean? If we renounce the forces of the world which would separate us and divide us and keep us enslaved to sin, and we turn to Jesus Christ, well, then we place our trust and our faith in the words summed up in the creed that God created all. There's only one God, and God created everything and every person and called it good. And that Jesus Christ is this divine Son who came and showed us how to live. And the Holy Spirit dwells within us, empowering us to live this life. And what does that life look like? It looks like a life where we continue by showing up and participating in the apostles' teaching and fellowship. We show up and we participate in communion and study together. And we go out and we strive for justice and peace. We don't merely hope for it. We strive for it. And we respect the dignity of every human being, which includes our own. And we name it when dignity is violated. But we do that out of love. And we forgive. And we're compassionate. And we're kind. And we're merciful. And we show this world a different way. When people walk through these doors, they want to see Jesus. This world teaches a different way. And somehow, somewhere, people want something different. And they come looking to see Jesus. We come looking to see Jesus. And when we place ourselves in this story, we can be the Greeks looking to see Jesus. We can be Philip and Andrew going and saying to Jesus, people want to see you. We can be the bystanders hearing the words of Jesus. And we can be the new abundant life that Jesus' death and resurrection has created. We can be all of that. We can look for Jesus, and we can show people Jesus. And we can know that when people walk through those doors, they're looking to see Jesus, and they are showing Jesus to us. And when we go out of those doors, we go out and we look for Jesus, and we show Jesus to the world. In the way we live, in the way we love, in the way we serve, we show the world a different way, a way that shows people Jesus. Nativity, show people Jesus. This world desperately needs it. Show people Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you desire to be baptized? I do. Do you now Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all the sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your full trust in his grace and love? I do. Father, 
promise to follow and obey him as your Lord. I do. Can these confirmation and reaffirmation and reception will not be presented? I present Seth Alexander for confirmation, Kevin McKinney for confirmation, Dennis Paul Patrick for reception, um, Rebecca Jean Clark for reaffirmation, Thomas Stevenson for reaffirmation. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. All right, this next question is to everybody here. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is ascended to the dead. On the third God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. Let us now pray for Marilyn, who has received the sacrament of new birth and for those who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant the Lord that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, some of us are going back to the font. But not all. But not all. And we do this for a variety of reasons. One, the font is really heavy, so we're not bringing it forward. <laughs> That's the practical. The second one is the theological. We come to the back, because baptism is the entrance into the church. So if you look at old medieval churches, often they have a baptistry outside. And this is why the font is at the back. I need somebody to hold my crozier. Who wants to pour water? Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, 
He led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism and that we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, with share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who have come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And a towel. I need a towel. I need a towel. Oh, thank, thank you. All right, you're going to put your bulletin up somewhere. And if you would lean over, and maybe with one hand hold your hair back, unless you want to get it all wet. Okay. <laughs> I'll lean over a little more. Marilyn, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a towel. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Marilyn, you are sealed. Whoa. <laughs> you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of baptism. I marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to. Hold it for just a second. We're going to walk back up front to be welcomed into the church. So let's go back up front. Okay. Now remember, there's actually words to this welcome. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the house of God. Invest the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal wisdom. So this is your baptismal candle. And what I suggest is don't have it lit the entire service. It'll drip on you. Right? <laughs> but um, every year on March 17th, you're blessed to be baptized on a saint's day, so you'll never forget. Light the candle. Tell the story of your baptism. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, or you can stand up here and go. Yeah. You don't have to. You can do whatever you wish. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, and you can blow that out. Okay. All right, you're going to hold. All right. I need another hand. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants 
the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of the Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's going to be better. First. (laughs) Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Seth with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Who wants to go next? They're going to confuse me. Kevin, are you being received or confirmed? Confirmed. Confirmed. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Kevin with your Holy Spirit. Sustain him. Empower him for your service. Sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Dennis, Paul, Patrick. We recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about those. <laughs> That's okay. Becky G. May the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Do you want to go by Thomas Steve or Steve Thomas? Thomas Stevenson, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. 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 Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Now you may clap. (laughs) (laughs) And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning. We welcome our visitors and guests today. I'm so happy to have Seth with us. Is from these folks are from St. Mark's Moscow, so we'll be able to be sure and connect at the coffee hour. We have planned a big potluck, so there's lots of food out there. So please stick around for that, and we'll have a little bit more time with Gretchen, who we're thrilled to have with us today. Thank you for being here. It's a bit of a homecoming for her. I'll let her tell you more about it. But is it tomorrow? Is the anniversary of her bishop's ordination? And, uh, consecration and so it's perfect for, for that timing. There's announcements in your green leaflet. I'm not going to go over any of them to save time, but please take note of all that's going on this week. Um, are there any, any announcements that got left off of that that anybody wants to lift up? Any birthdays or anniversaries that we want to celebrate? All right, well, I'll turn it back over to Bishop Gretchen. Walk in love, as Christ loved us, he gave himself for us, an offering, and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as your Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The love of our Lord Jesus draw you ever closer to himself. The power of our Lord Jesus strengthen you to do his work. The joy of our Lord Jesus fill your soul. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Remain with you always. Amen. Amen.